Australia Productions, in association with Soul Drifter Studios and their affiliates, presents The Martian Broadcast. An audio drama based on the true story of the infamous 1938 radio broadcast that shook the nation with fear. Previously on The Martian Broadcast. You're lucky I don't call security to have the pack of you thrown out. War of the Worlds is ready. You will be playing around the world. I say we're going ahead with the Mars broadcast. You will be protected if you do, but only you. Fire everyone else. You're not serious. I look forward to your show tomorrow. Yes, Mr. Taylor. Shame. This one could have been something. Take care, everyone. I... I am sorry. This is Episode 6, All Part of the Show. Didn't make it home. <clears throat> this is my home. Oh? I live on the stage of the Mercury Theater. You're at CBS. Oh, hell. You're kidding me. In my stupor, my feet dragged me back here. Should I get us some breakfast? I think I should buy. Help me up, will you? <clears throat> oh, past but two. How did we end up here? We followed your lead. Uh, no last stands for us. I suppose not. When is Aura arriving? In a few hours. Do you want to give it a listen when she does? Don't you ever tire of listening to yourself? Tire of it? I dread it. Nothing worse in the world listening to yourself perform. Critiquing everything. But no, I, I need to listen to everyone else. To the real artists that make the show, not just some blowhard named Wells. You can't still be drunk. <clears throat> no, but I am hung over as a pelt to dry. <sighs> Perhaps this mental anguish makes me soft. Hmm? Perhaps. Or perhaps you're human, after all. Oh, please. Don't you know? I'm a man from Mars. It's nearly noon, I'm surprised. By what? Aura being late and Davidson Taylor not standing here with a gun pressed to our backs? Oh, don't joke. His ego is nearly as fragile as yours. Hmm. I don't think I've ever heard this room so quiet on a Sunday before. It does seem... wrong, doesn't it? Unnatural. Any more calls from California? I'm flying out. Next week. Is that right? Only for a day or two. Anything promising? We'll have to see, won't we? I suppose we will. Suppose we will what? I'll go positively mad as we continue to kowtow to the Campbell Soup Overlords. Oh, you reek of hooch, Orson. I apologize. I don't think CBS ever gave me the keys to the company bath. Oh, if it makes you feel any better, you weren't the only one up drinking last night. I didn't think I was. Was it at least the good stuff? You should always treat yourself before show night. After a certain point, it all started tasting the same. Yeah, always does. You know, I always prefer the company of people who can have a good drink. Oh, God, Aura, please, no. Hair of the dog will do you well. <clears throat> to the Mercury Theater and our first encore performance. <laughs> oh. Speaking of, I I'd like to hear it. Is that so? I want to appreciate everything that you all have ever done for the Mercury Theater, not as Orson Welles, but as an audience member. And to be frank, I don't think any of us ever listen to them again when they're done. I do. You do? Every week. Why? The same reason you both do what you do, day in and day out. So I can get better at what I love to do. Aura, if CBS ever decides to let you go, I would be remiss if I didn't offer you a permanent position at the Mercury Theater at this very moment. You can cash that in at any point. Any point? You sure about that? I'd say so. Good. Because I might need it right now. Why's that? Well, funny thing about drinking late in the evening, you get so forgetful the next morning. What are you saying, Aura? I must have left the recording at home. Well, 
isn't that a shame? And there isn't a way that Art can bring it to you? No. He's off visiting his brother, two hours outside of town. And I don't have a set of keys. Well, it seems we're at an impasse. I suppose that would be correct. Would be? You think I'm the only one who thought of doing something like this? All right, everyone. Orson's hangover isn't too bad. We've got a damn good show to put on, and I don't want to waste the opportunity. You'll all be fired, you know that, right? There are worse things. Like working for Orson Welles. <laughs> I appreciate all of you coming together for this. For me. Oh no, Orson. This isn't for you. This is for the Mercury Theater. Well, all right then. For the Mercury Theater. Annie, here's a list. I need you to run down to the hardware store and pick up some things. Of course. And hurry back. I don't know how much time we have. Okay, I know someone needed a jar. Paul, is that lock in place? Done. Where's my jam jar? Has anyone seen my jar? Here you go. But it's filled with stuff. It's jam. Empty, Annie. I, I need it empty. Do I have to do everything? I corrected pages for you. Swell. Do you have some time? Can I get a few hundred copies of my resume? Ooh, mine too. That's not funny. Besides, I'm already doing mine. All right, people. Three minutes. Hi, Minuten. Paul, I wanted to make sure you got in this bit about the troops mobilizing. It's in. Here are the pages. Thank you. Where's Orson? Booth, I think. Orson, we've got pages. Ah, good, John. Take a listen. How's that? Hmm. Eerie. What is that? The top coming off of the first alien ship. That will be perfect. Is that a... Yep, a jam jar and a toilet. Do I want to know how you decided to try that one out? A girl's got to keep her secrets. Olsen? Coming. Fantastic work, Cora. You feeling all right? You seem cheery. This close to air, it's unnerving. John, the die has been cast. Our future, whatever it is, has been set. If I can't escape the gallows, I might as well enjoy the walk there. Odd time to become an optimist, but I'll take it. Taylor's on his way up. What was that about the gallows? Annie. You are a beautiful, clever girl with a terrific gift for writing dialogue. Um, thank you. Go ahead and meet Mr. Taylor at the elevator with some coffee. Hmm? So he's in a better mood when he shuts us down? Oh, one sec. Bit of the good stuff to put him in a better mood. Go, fly, we don't have time. Aura, where's my bag of supplies? Orson, that's not going to be enough to stop him. Don't worry. With you, I always do. Break a leg. As long as Davidson doesn't break our lock. You're insane! Then what does that make you? Everybody get set! And that's when I heard it. That silence. My favorite sound. Each artist hushed in anticipation, waiting in helpless awe as the unknown hurls towards us. Just like clockwork, every week we take everything out there and hone it down to a singular point of excitement, anxiety, and focus for an audience of just us here in this We're room. going live in five, four, three, two. The Columbia Broadcasting System and its affiliated stations present Orson Welles and the Mercury Theater on the air in The War of the Worlds by H.G. Wells. <laughs> and gentlemen, the director of the Mercury Theatre and star of these broadcasts, Orson Welles. We now know that in the early years of the 20th century, this world was being watched closely by intelligences greater than man's and yet as mortal as his own. We know now that as human beings... This isn't around the world. Where's the recording? Ah, Mr. Taylor. Seems like Aura must have misplaced it. I'm shutting this down. Immediately. Who put this lock on? The man running the show. The man running the... Now you listen here, Hausman. That is no man. That's a child who is upset that his toy is being taken away. 
In fact, all of you are going to pay for this. You're fired. That's fine. That's fine? Yes. The show is still going on, isn't it? Not if I have a say-so. I'm coming back. And if that lock isn't off, I'm breaking down the damn door. Looks like the booze didn't help. <laughs> Might make him a little easier to knock over. Thank you, Annie. So what do you think of the show? A little kitty for me, but it's fun. Fun indeed. Speaking of, Mr. Houseman, I think it's time we put a cap on our fun, officially, that is. The theater comes first, and I think I want to make my own dreams come true before I even think of settling down. I think that's grand. I'm going to keep an eye on Taylor. I'll let you know if anything changes. Thank you. We now take you to the Meridian Room in the Hotel Park Plaza in downtown New York, where you will be entertained by the music of Raymond Rockello and his orchestra. It is reported that at 8.50 p.m., a huge flaming object believed to be a meteorite, fell on a farm in the neighborhood of Grover's Mill, New Jersey, 22 what miles to the from music? Trenton. It's all a part of the we show, We take you now hon. to Grover's Mill, New Jersey. What I can see of the object itself doesn't look much like a meteor. At least not like the meteors I've seen. It looks more like a huge cylinder. It has a diameter of... of this is boring. What would you say, Professor Pearson? Hush now, I'm trying to listen. One side there, one side. While the policemen are pushing the crowd back, Here's Mr. Wilmoth, owner of the farm here. He may have some interesting facts to add. Mr. Wilmoth, would you please tell the radio audience as much as you remember of this rather unusual visitor that dropped in your backyard? Step closer, please. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Mr. Wilmoth. Boy, they're really pulling out them stops in this show, huh? Shh. Like this. Kind of like a 4th of July rocket. Yes. I seen a kind of greenish streak, and then zingo! Something smacked the ground, knocked me clear out of my chair. Ladies and gentlemen, you've just heard Mr. Wilmoth, owner of the farm where this thing has fallen. I wish I could convey the atmosphere, the, the background of this fantastic scene. Hundreds of cars are parked in a field back of us. It must be some kind of Halloween prank. Right? They said Grover's Mill? That's about two hours from here. Should we call the police? What will they do against this? They aren't going to drive out there and save anyone. They don't do anything. This is an emergency. What if we need some supplies or something? Well, I'm not just going to sit here and wait for Jesus on this. We got things coming out of the sky. Someone should do something. Some of the more daring souls are now venturing through the edge. Hello? Police? Yeah, I'd like to report some goings-on in Grover's Mill. Oh, yes. Yes, I, I heard it on the radio. It now, sounds awful. Gentlemen, there's something that I haven't mentioned in all this excitement, but it's now becoming more distinct. Perhaps you've caught it already on your radio. Listen. Listen. Do you hear it? It's a curious humming sound that seems to come from inside the object. I'll move the microphone nearer. Now, we're not more than 25 feet away. Can you hear it now? I've got your information down and we'll send some uniforms to you. Sir, we've been getting reports from others, but there's no uh, sir, actual sight. not open fire. That is a water tower. Yeah, what about me? Sir, I'm not sure what's going on, but I'm getting some odd reports. It's Halloween. What did you expect? I just got a call about some kind of explosions down at a farm. What? Yeah, I had an old lady saying she was under attack. Kept saying it was the end of the world. Hey, I just had another one asking if we would be giving out gas masks until the army could arrive. The army? Yeah, apparently CBS is reporting some kind of invasion. Find a radio and turn it on. Ladies and gentlemen, I have just been handed a message that comes from Grover's Mill by telephone. Just a moment. At least... Forty people, including six state troopers, lie dead in a field east of the village of Grover's Mill. Their bodies burned and distorted beyond all possible recognition. The next voice you hear will be that of Brigadier General Montgomery Smith, commander of the state militia at Trenton, New Jersey. Yes, sir. I of course. By the no, of no. It, to place it's the all a part of the show. No, no, sir. No, no. no I, I'll call them after we're through. I imagine it won't take long. Ladies and gentlemen, I have just been informed 
that we have finally established communication with an eyewitness of the tragedy. This is Captain One Lander, second. Of the Signal Corps, attached to the state militia, now engaged in military operations. Oh, <laughs> I was, um, I, I was just thinking of calling you. What's the emergency, officers? You know, it's not half bad. For a last stand, you mean? Costa would be proud. Wasn't he already? <laughs> Isn't that what got him killed? Yes, and thankfully I think Orson learned that. And that's why we're still here. For now. For now. Turn it off. That was quick. Did you have some officers on standby, Taylor? Shut it down now. Unfortunately, none of us on this side of the door have that power. Do it, or these men will arrest you. On what grounds? I've just gotten off the phone with CBS's head office, the police, and the mayor. Your prank here has caused a public crisis. This isn't a prank. We announced who we were at the beginning, as we do every week. What kind of fool would announce a prank? The same they would admit a crime before committing it. The show is almost to the first break. I promise you, no one will think it's real after that point. This is out of my control, Houseman. It doesn't matter if the show is good or not. So, you think the show is good? <sighs> I think it's the best thing the Mercury Theater has ever done, but I don't get to make the calls right now. Why don't you be like one of us and pretend? Act like you do. Decide what you think is best for CBS. After all, do you think anyone is listening to any other station at this moment? The bells you hear are ringing to warn the people to evacuate the city as the Martians approach. Estimated in the last two hours, three million people have moved out along the roads to the north. Hutchinson River Parkway, still kept open for motor traffic. Avoid bridges to Long Island, hopelessly jammed. All communication with Jersey Shore closed 10 minutes ago. No more defenses. Our armies wiped out. Artillery, Air Force, everything wiped out. You said it yourself. This is the best. But we still need to finish it. This may be the last broadcast. We'll stay here till the end. <laughs> I do apologize. I must have forgotten slower. that tonight was a show night. Forgotten? It is hard to remember when you're in charge of so many things. Coffee, Mr. Taylor? <sighs> Has anyone here been drinking? Just the coffee. I'll make sure the boys down at the station get a care basket from CBS for this little mix-up. <laughs> I appreciate your understanding. Rest assured, I'm certain we'll all be talking about this tomorrow to clear up any and all confusion. I count on that, Mr. Taylor. Oh, but before I go, do you think you could get me Mr. Wells' autograph? I'm a big fan. Of course. Have a good night, officers. And happy Halloween. I need to go back down and make some phone calls. I'll be setting up some press meetings tomorrow, Houseman. I trust you and Orson will be there? I assure you that both of us will be. Thank you, Davidson. And to think, I wanted goblins and ghouls. <laughs> and uh, anyone on the air? Isn't there anyone on the air? Isn't there anyone? You are listening to a CBS presentation of Orson Welles and the Mercury Theatre on the air in an original dramatization of The War of the Worlds by H.G. Wells. The performance will continue after a brief intermission. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. This is Orson Welles, ladies and gentlemen, out of character to assure you that the War of the Worlds has no further significance than as the holiday offering it was intended to be. The Mercury Theater's own radio version of dressing up in a sheet and jumping out of a bush and saying boo. Starting now, we couldn't soap all your windows and steal your garden gates by tomorrow night. So we did the next best thing. We annihilated the world before your very ears and utterly destroyed the CBS. You will be relieved, I hope, to learn that we didn't mean it, and that both institutions are still open for business. 
So, goodbye, everybody. And remember the terrible lesson you learned tonight. That grinning, glowing, globular invader of your living room is an inhabitant of the pumpkin patch. And if the doorbell rings and nobody's there, that was no Martian. It's Halloween. It's a little quiet, isn't it? Well, if you ignore the police and press downstairs. We're up here. What's down there doesn't matter right now. But when we leave. Sure. When we leave. So, what's next week's show? I was thinking something light and easy. Heart of Darkness? (sighs) Do I have to talk to anyone? Not if you don't want to. I'm just going to blame Orson. Mm, I was going to tell them it was all Hausman's idea. I thought we were listening to Aura. (laughs) That's a gas. You listening to me? I think the press would call your bluff. (laughs) Should we bother showing up to work tomorrow? I'd say so. But as you asked before, what's next? Hmm? I'll tell you what's next. I'm going to sneak away before they lump me in with you nuts. Yeah, it's too late for that. I've got your script. Keep it. You changed the damn thing anyway. Annie, take tomorrow off. Thank you, Mr. Koch. I'm going to help everyone else pack up downstairs. If you take off before I do, come say bye. May not see you all again for a bit. Ye of little faith. I guess I'm next. I'll walk you to the door. That's all right. I'd like to. I want to say that you are truly sweeter and smarter than most. And I am grateful to have known you, as we were, for such a time. Me too. Now you'll just have to know me a different way. And how's that? Mercury Theater's next great writer. Ah, I look forward to it. You uh, need a ride, Annie. That's all right. I'll grab a cab. Thanks again, Aura. Of course. Get home safe. Anything left in that bottle? The well has run dry. Always too early. You know, I hardly ever get a drop of our wrap bottle. Yeah, well, we all need the extra to deal with you. I'll see you tomorrow, boys. Will you? Taylor won't like someone who's liable to mutiny, Aura. Well, it's what makes me so charming, isn't it? No, I don't think he'll mind. If all else fails, I'll say you threaten me. I'd buy that. So would I. But don't make this a habit, boys. I've only got a few more like this in me. Is that so? That's so. Will you all get home safe? I might spend the night here again. I don't wish to be drawn and quartered before my interview tomorrow. Certain you'll get one. (sighs) Only one, dear boy? (laughs) Good night, Mr. John Houseman. Good night, Mr. Orson Welles. Good night, Mrs. Aura Nichols. Good night, Aura. And thank you for everything. I told them I'd be fine, but if I'm honest, I said it more for them than for me. Very rarely can we ever be sure of where our actions lead. Maybe no one notices. Maybe you start a national panic. Maybe you get fired. Consequences. But I've heard they should be damned anyway. Besides, who ever heard of a radio show ever doing any real harm? Can we be blamed if people thought it was real? The story's been around for decades. All we did was make it sound like news. Are they mad at us or at themselves for being tricked on Halloween? Well, whatever it is, I know those who listen to it won't soon forget. And that's all we could ever ask for. That may be a standing ovation. (laughs) No one ever talks about leaving a world you create behind. In here, our world was invaded by Martians. Out there, people are just as alien. Guess we'll just have to see what kind of war we'll face yet. 
Miss, were you working with CBS? National Enquirer, was any of this big Was it Orson Welles' intention to cause mass panic coast to coast? What was your role in all this? Me? I'm just a Mercury Theater player. Thanks for listening. Thank you for listening to The Martian Broadcast, an audio drama production brought to you by Pralia Productions, Soul Drifter Studios, and their affiliates. Directed by S. Christian Rowe. Written by S. Christian Rowe and Jordan Stidham. Starring Ari Stidham as Orson Welles, Keaton Talmadge as Ora Nichols, Jim Brannigan as John Houseman, Oscar Jordan as Davidson Taylor, Courtney Reese as Ann Froelich, Christopher Hodge as Howard Koch, and Rama Valori as Paul Stewart. Produced by Casey Hammonds, Daniel Patton, Jordan Stidham, and S. Christian Rowe. Music composition by J.D. O'Day. Sound editing by Jason Crow. Hey everybody, it's Jordan and Christian. We're the creators of The Martian Broadcast. Thank you so much for listening to the entire series. That's all we wrote, and we thank you so much for listening. We really, really hope you enjoyed. We're certain you did because you made it to the end. This is a big thank you to you for listening. There are so many people to thank, but we really want to thank the people who made it all possible. This project wouldn't have come to life without some incredible people behind the scenes as well. So we'd like to take a moment just to give a shout out to J.D. O'Day. To Jason Crow, Daniel Patton. Casey Hammonds. And our wonderfully talented cast for bringing these characters to life. And you know what? Thank you, Jordan. Thank you, Christian. And... One more time, thank you all for listening at home. Thank you to those who subscribed. Thank you to those who supported us along the way. Really, thank you from the darkest depths of space and from our black hole hearts. Well, don't, he's not speaking for me. I have a normal human heart, but I still thank you. Thanks again. Have a good one. Bye.